Australia coming back to me out there. Bring her back. This is UDX 791 waving. Hey, how's it going there, Mick? How's it going? Good to hear you, buddy. Yeah, we're doing good up here. There's a lot of noise on this channel. Let's QSY to another channel. Let's go up to another channel. Yeah, how about 300? How about 5 KCs down? 300. Okay, no problem. We'll QSY 305, channel 30. How about it, uh, Mick? How about it, Mick? Uh, UDX 791. Hey, Mick, UDX 791. Got you in there, Mick. This is Joe out here. Sounding good. Oh, it's sounding good, man. That IMAX is working great. I, I have an IMAX as well. I have that one hooked up to my RCI 2970DX, but uh, hey, you're making a trip from Australia on that IMAX. Very impressive. Yeah, Roger, mate. Just got, a, um, just got the uh, Cobra 2000 back off the tech, and uh, I'll just try it out. Just see if I can get it on the vertical. Uh, that's pretty good there, Joe. You're doing about a 7 to a 9 on this radio, over. Yeah, you as well. I got you 5 and 9, 5 and 9. So, uh, sounding good. Nice audio, too, Mick. Uh, Q5 all the way, brother. Yeah, Roger, mate. Uh, it's always nice to use these old radios, the old Cobra 2000. Uh, I, I do like them, though. It's probably one of my uh, favorite radios, over. I love the Cobra 2000. I've never owned one. But I've always loved that radio, and they're, uh, they were very popular back in the day. And you know what? A lot of people still use them today. Yeah, right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, a lot of people still use them. Um, I just uh, got it back from the tech, and um, I thought I'd crank it up when I heard you out there. I wasn't, uh, I didn't know if I'd get back here, but there you go. Um, I made the trip up all the way over. Yeah, we don't usually have uh, Australia coming too much in the daytime here. It's only... Uh, 2.55 p.m. Pacific time here uh, on the Gulf Islands, so it's uh, kind of a treat to hear Australia in there. Okay, Q yeah, we'll listen for you, buddy. I'll be listening here. That's Mick down in Australia. Oh yeah, now you're 40 over, man. That one's really loud. That Ranger is loud. Yeah, Roger, mate. Well, yeah, this one is, uh, this one's got the flat top. Uh, it's got the five element and uh, doing about 450 whiskeys at the moment, over. It's working, man. That 400 horsepower is uh, definitely making it across the uh, from the South Pacific up here to the North Pacific. Uh, I think right now, yeah, I'm running about 175 to 200 through a Texas Star 500. I do have it turned down, but uh, hopefully I sound half as good as you. Uh, no, you sound perfect, mate. If uh, I sound like your station, I'm happy. Um, you, you've got me, I've got you uh, turned over. You're breaking up on the uh, end of the red, mate. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, well, that's all right. Uh, you're breaking up on the end of the red, mate. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, well, that's all right. You're breaking up on the end of the red, mate. Yeah, no, this is great. I love this uh, when, when Australia comes in so early. I was, I was out here in the shack really early working a lot of uh, European DX, a lot of... A lot of Europe coming in this morning, uh, but it doesn't come in for very long, about two, two and a half hours, and it's all gone. But we don't usually hear Australia, New Zealand, and Tasmania till uh, in the evening. So I swung the beam around uh, towards the South Pacific, and heck, I called, and there you were. Yeah, Roger, Mike. Well, I'm all surprised you were out there because um, I was listening. Uh, just, I was just mucking around with the old Copper 2000 buddies, and uh, I heard you call out, and I thought, oh, wow. Because uh, all the skip that's been coming in is in the uh, lower part of the U.S. And, um, yeah, I was surprised I even heard you, over. 
Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised you're in there too. Now, tell me your town again. You were. Were you near Sydney or was it Melbourne? Yeah, I'm close to Melbourne, mate. Um, I'm 110 k's north of Melbourne. 110 k's north of Melbourne, just up the uh, highway there, over. Okay, okay, closer to Melbourne, that's right, okay. Yeah, no, we do get a lot of South Pacific and a lot of Central Pacific too, Mick. Uh, usually around uh, 5 p.m. or so, the uh, U.S. skip starts to fade out there, and we get a lot of the... Uh, uh, Indonesia as well has been coming in in the Philippines, but a lot of you probably get Hawaii too. We get a lot of Hawaii skip. Yeah, we got a fair bit from uh, Hawaii and all the little islands around it there on the Lulu and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we get a lot of that um, when uh, when the state sides come in, and um, and then uh, once we get the states, then you guys come in a little later. Uh, then Canada and that comes in a little later. So um, yeah, we we do get. Uh, That's very interesting. So I have to ask you a question. Living in Australia, Australia is a pretty darn big country. Do you work skip within your own country? Yeah, Roger, mate. Yep, yep. Um, we get uh, all around the country. Um, we get New South Wales. We get uh, Adelaide, um, Sydney, um, Brisbane, Queensland. We get a lot of Queensland skip. Um, probably Queensland is probably one of the most ones we get. That's very interesting. And how about Perth? How about Perth, Australia? Because that's on the other side, right? Yeah, Roger. Yeah, WA, Western Australia. Yeah, we get that. That comes in um, quite often as well. And when it does come in, it comes in quite loud. So, uh, yeah, we do get that, Joe. We do get the whole of Australia. We get Tazi and everything. When, when the skip's there, uh, we definitely do get them over. That is really interesting. I was thinking about that the other day, and I've never any, I never asked anybody in Australia if they talk skip in their own country. Kind of like, well, we talk skip within our own country here. So, you know, a lot of people assume Australia is not a very big country, but I tell people it's as just about as big as mainland USA. Yeah, it probably gets really hot and dry there, like Arizona, or maybe uh, some of the uh, uh, the deserts in California. You know, I, I can imagine kind of like the Northern Territory, hot and dry, right? Yeah, hot, dry, and uh, they've got crocodiles up there, mate. So, um, yeah, probably, uh, probably not a place you want to go to if you want to go for a swim in one of their dams, either. Yeah, that's the thing, you know what I mean? You could be out there on a hot day and you want to go take a dip in a lake or a river, and uh, you go in for a dip and you might not come out. It's kind of like Florida. Florida's like that too, you know. You just never know if there's a crocodile in one of those lakes. Yeah, well, you know, um, I think Louisiana's the same, isn't it? And they've got them in Tennessee. Um, I'm not Tennessee, um, Texas. So I've, I've watched on TV. But, yeah, here, you can't, um, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to go swimming in the beach up north. Um, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. You probably get taken by a shark or a croc, over. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Well, you know, even in the southwest corner of Arkansas, believe it or not, Mick, there are crocodiles There's or, or gators down there in Arkansas as well, and I think they're over in South Carolina as well, and they say when they get those freezes every so often, the uh, crocs or alligators or whatever you want to call them stick their nostrils out above the water, and the water can kind of freeze above around them, and their, no their nostrils are sticking out above the ice. Yeah, uh, forget that, mate. Yeah, that's, uh, I didn't know they had them uh, down uh, around that way. Uh, I thought they only had them in uh, Florida, uh, Texas, Louisiana. Um, yeah, that's all I thought they had them, but up in um, the Carolinas as well, over. Yeah, and Arkansas, too. You think of Arkansas, you wouldn't think of uh, alligators or crocs, whatever they are. I guess they're crocodiles. And uh, they actually, in the southwest corner of Arkansas, there are native palm trees, too, because I grow them in our garden. I'm a, 
I have a palm nursery here, Nick, and that's what we grow. We grow uh, these cold hardy type palm trees. And if you go to the southwest corner of Arkansas, it's called the City of Warren. The City of Warren, Arkansas, there is, uh, they have them down there. They have these palm trees and they have uh, alligators or crocodiles. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Um, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. You never know um, where they are, I suppose. Um, yeah, I know up in, um, up in Queensland, up in Cairns, when we went to Cairns, went down to the beach and uh, the city of Cairns, and you know, you, well, the hectic signs do not swim in the beach, um, do not swim in the water, and because uh, of crocodiles and sharks. And um, beside the... Uh, Oh, that's interesting. So they have saltwater uh, crocodiles. They have those down in uh, in parts of Mexico and also I think in Costa Rica they have the saltwater crocodiles. So I guess if the shark don't eat you, then maybe the crocodile will. Well, if the shark grabs you, uh, he might get a bit of a snack out of you, but the crocodile will finish you off, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right, Mick. Well, I heard Karen's is very tropical up there. That that part of Australia is really tropical. Yeah, I don't like hot and humid. I don't do very well with high heat and humidity for long periods of time. When I was down in Florida one time, it was kind of like that. After it rained, it got really sticky and hot and humid, and I, I prefer not to be in that. Yeah, well, I'm the same as you, Joe. I don't like the hot weather. We've had a couple of hot days down here. Well, yesterday it got up to 38, I think, or 38 degrees. Mm. It was pretty hot. And, uh, yeah, once you start getting that feeling of being sticky and your clothes sticking to you, and, nah, uh, I don't like it. Um, yeah, I don't like it. Um, the problem is, uh, where we are now, we're uh, a little bit north of uh, Melbourne, and uh, we get that I can imagine. Uh, I guess maybe right by the water, it might be nice. Maybe a bit of an ocean breeze or something. But uh, yeah, no, I'm with you on that. There too too much of extremes. I don't like. I hate extreme cold and I hate extreme heat. I kind of like a happy medium. Now where you are, I'd love to be in winter time. It'd be absolutely awesome. So uh, winters here are generally pretty mild out here on the islands, unlike the rest of Canada, but still cold comparison to where you are. So uh, today it's around 10 degrees Celsius, so 10 degrees Celsius for winter day. I'm okay with that because it's winter. Uh, summer times here are uh, usually around 25 degrees. 25 degrees, a uh, little bit of an ocean breeze and low humidity out here on our island. Yeah, that sounds nice, right? Yeah, that sounds a place to be, doesn't it? Um, not too cold, not too hot. Yeah, we're, we're pretty good. Um, our winters here are pretty good. Uh, the nights get a little bit chilly. They're not bad, but the days are, are quite nice um, where I am. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess if you wanted to get cooler, like a lot cooler, you'd go to Tassie. You'd go down south, over. Yeah, Tasmania, that's right, too. The, the, the climate they say there in parts of Tasmania... And even the very south island of New Zealand on the very south end, it can actually get pretty cool at times. Oh, yeah, 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 they can. Um, Tassie gets bloody cold too, you know. Um, the summers are good, um, but the winters would be uh, not for me, mate. It's <laughs> too cold. Yeah, I like, I like being in the middle, Joe. I like it uh, around the 25, 28. I'm with you, Mick. I find as we get older, we get a little bit more picky about how we like to feel, right? So I'm going to be 60 at the end of March, and uh, as I get older, I dislike cold even more. I absolutely hate cold. I used to love skiing, go up to Whistler all the time skiing. You know what? I don't care if I ever see snow again in my life. Yeah, I'm 
I'm with you, man. And uh, I see back east in Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada there, they had record snowfall. They got feet and feet upon snow. It's just unbelievable. I look at that. They had a blizzard. See, I, I don't like that. If I was living there and I had the money, I'd probably be down somewhere south in Arizona for the winter. And a lot of Canadians do that, too. They take off and they'll go down to, like, Arizona or somewhere south in Florida and they'll spend, like, you know, five or six months down there, miss all the crappy weather here, and then come back. Yes, that's what the right thing to do, mate. Um, yeah, we have a lot of people uh, from Victoria and that go up to Queensland and uh, Western Australia because it's a lot warmer in the wintertime. So a lot of people have uh, places up there and they go up there, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, we used to go up there every year. Um, my sister used to live up there, and uh, we used to go up and holiday up there, but... Um, I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. And you know, and the and it's the best of both worlds in Australia because you have mountains too. I mean, if uh, somebody wants to go skiing, you can go up to Kosciuszko, and uh, it can get pretty cold up there too. Yeah, Roger, mate. Yeah, that's right. You know, Mount Pula, uh, all them, um, you know, uh, places. There's got a lot of places you can go to go do your skiing and stuff in winter time. But um, yeah, even uh, where I used to live, Joe, um, up in uh, a place. That is very interesting. So it's at a high enough elevation where you can get snow. Snow, what are the Blue Mountains like? Have you ever been up into the Blue Mountains? Yeah, I've, I've been up there uh, maybe twice. I think it's uh, a little bit higher than King Lake. I'm not sure on the uh, King Lake um, what uh, height it is. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I always say uh, King Lake's like the Blue Mountains, similar, you know. And then you've got the Strathbogie Ranges, which is pretty high. That's where uh, Trevor is, you know, uh, 176. He's up on the Strathbogie Ranges there, over. Oh, God, yeah, Trevor. I talked to him quite a bit there. Trevor, he runs the uh, stacked flat side seven element Yagi beams. He comes booming in here. Oh, yeah, he's got, um, he's got a big antenna. I've been to Trevor's place. He's got a uh, big ass antenna, and um, he's running up on the hill there. And looking out, he's got a great view. Um, I always call Trevor the Eagle. He's always sitting on top of the hill, over. Roger on that there, and when you want to walk, Turk, you want to talk a lot of DX. It's nice to have a, a piece of property up at some higher elevation there. And I know you're up pretty high where you are, right? Uh, is that a QSL? You got you're up at a good elevation. Nah, negative, negative. I'm on the flats. I'm on the flatland. Um, yeah, I'm not high at all. Um, yeah, I'm on the flatlands of um, yeah, Victoria. It's all flatter here. Yeah, it trips up. Uh, it trips up around. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. I thought you were up in the mountains there. That's why you're getting out so good. That's amazing on the flat there because you are just booming in here into the red. Yeah, I think, um, I think I've got good soil here. I've got like um, rocky, pebbly soil. And um, yeah, this area, it was, uh, they found gold here many years ago. They, I think they still are. Uh, they found uh, gold not long ago. But um, yeah, this soil's um, yeah, probably gives me a, a good grounding, eh? Oh man, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's uh, yeah. No, I've uh, I'm always impressed when you're coming in here. Your signal's very strong, consistent, and a uh, very loud audio. And in my my uh, location here, I'm about 160 feet above sea level, and about 900 feet or so from the Pacific Ocean. So right across the street from us is the ocean there. Yeah, I think it helps being on a smallish type island here. That's what a lot of people tell me it does. And I'm on the very northern end of the island. It's kind of like a point. So on either side of me, we have the ocean on very narrow piece of land. Yeah, it sounds like a good spot where you are, mate. How big is that island? How long does it take you to drive around your island there, Joe? Over? 
Uh, from my end to the get, I'm on the north end, so to drive to the very south end, it's about 30 minutes. 30 minutes, so it's 16.7 miles long. From here to the south end is 16.7 miles. It's not a very big haul, is it? Um, yeah, that's true. How many people live uh, on that island? Um, yeah, how many people live on that island? I think close to now, probably close to 11,000. No, 11,000. About 10,500 to 11,000. Uh, Roger, I was going to say that's a lot of people. 10,000, uh, uh, around 11,000, 10 or 11,000. Yeah, that's pretty cool, mate. You'd probably, you'd probably uh, pretty much know most of the people around on that island, right? Yeah, I've been here a long time, so yeah, you do get to know a lot of people. You see the same people all the time when you go to the grocery store or when you're in town. So uh, you do a lot of waving and a lot of saying hello to people. Oh yeah, lots of restaurants, art galleries. Uh, we're not a, we're not incorporated. We're not a, we're not even in a municipality or a city. So there's no mayor, there's no council, there's no street lights, no traffic lights here. It's uh, very rural. Yeah, that sounds good, mate. That sounds nice up there. Sounds like you're uh, you're in the perfect spot if you want to live uh, up around Canada, right? You betcha. And we're far enough away from the mainland too. It's uh, a three hour if you want to take the ferry over to the mainland. It's usually about three hours because it stops at some of the other Gulf Islands to the east of us, and then you got to go across. So, uh, and then it takes you to a ferry terminal about uh, 15 or 20 miles south of Vancouver. Yeah, Roger, that sounds cool, mate. Uh, I think you were telling me you, you, were, you were you born there or you uh, you actually moved there. Um, I can't remember if you told me. I think you said you were born there, right? I was born in Vancouver, but I've li I've been on this island over 30 years now. Uh, over 30 years. I moved here when I was in my 20s and I'm going to be 60 at the end of March. So I've been here a long time. My parents bought here, Mick, back in the 1970s. So uh, we always had like a summer place here and I got sick and tired of it over there. So I moved over here. Sounds like the best move you've ever done, mate. Um, yeah, well, you know, if you're, not, if you're not getting snow and you're not getting snow, you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, get the snow off your car in the morning. Sounds like you've done the right thing, have huh? Yeah, it's a good place. We rarely ever have to scrape frost, and uh, we had some snow in the middle of January, but it was gone in a about a, about a week. It was totally gone, all of it. And uh, we had our cold blast. We had a little cold blast the uh, middle of January, and I'm hoping winter's done now. The daffodils are blooming. There's lots of flowers blooming, so that's a good sign. Yeah, sounds good, mate. I like the idea of um, having no mayor on the island. I hear you, man. Yeah, because you pay enough taxes to the corrupt government as it is. Yeah, Roger, mate. Well, they always catch you out, don't they? Um, the government's always got their hand out for some, for some payment, you know, and uh, when they owe you money, they take ages to pay it, but uh, if you owe them money, you got to pay it straight away, um, otherwise you're in trouble, aren't you? That's what I said to my wife the other day. I said, you know what? When you owe them money, they want it right away, man. No questions asked, and they're always giving themselves raises, too.